little uh, movie, but I love this song because the song and this particular video clip really speaks to this idea of true joy. See, it's in the moment, full appreciation living, no matter what. I love it. So, I take it the day went well. No, it was horrible. No, it was horrible, but within that, you see this energy of meeting the moment with this full appreciation living and finding the beauty in that, whatever that thing is, whether it's a frisbee or a duck or whatever happens, it's there. It's there for us to appreciate. So that's what we're going to talk about today because, you know, it's not always easy to step into this way of being because a lot of us have stuff going on in our lives, don't we? Anybody got... Anybody not got stuff? Uh, maybe that's a better question. Anybody not got something going on? Yeah, we've all got stuff. And so sometimes, no, it's just horrible, right? And at the same time, we're invited to find the joy and the grace and the beauty within whatever that thing is. You know, it takes a lot of courage for us to be able to experience the depth of our humanity. Because our humanity, like the Buddhists say, we are always going to be invited to embrace the 10,000 joys, and guess what? The 10,000 sorrows. All of it. We get to embrace all of it. So it takes a lot of trust in the process, and it takes a lot of courage for us to be able to step into whatever that thing is that uh, may look like it's going to take away our joy. We don't have to let it do that. And so this whole month, we've been talking about this idea of becoming or growing into or remembering the truth of who we are, our being, as you see. The sacred becoming. It's, it's what this video demonstrates, this finding a hidden part of ourself that can embrace the moment, whatever it looks like to find new symbols and to create new patterns in our way of showing up in the world on a day-to-day -day basis so that we experience a life in a richer way and actually love the life we're living. Sometimes <clears throat> we don't exactly love the life we're living if we're really honest with ourselves. Isn't that the truth? Sometimes life doesn't feel good. And so this capacity to actually look at all of it the 10,000 joys, the 10,000 sorrows, and love it anyway, that's what we're getting at here. And most of it's based on choice. It's based on choice, because we have a choice about the way we respond to whatever that thing is that presents itself to us in the moment. We have these infinitely beautiful, creative, intelligent minds that allow us to make choices, to figure stuff out, and to make a choice about how to be present with whatever that thing is, you see. And most of it is about giving ourselves permission to be like this guy on the video and let that passionate self become unleashed and just go about being goofy. Anybody worried about being goofy? No? Good for you. Good for you. Be passionate with life, be goofy with life, be heartfelt. And I love what our author tells us, to be a soulful expression of who we are. That's our joy. To be a soulful, goofy, heartfelt, passionate expression of who we are in the moment, regardless of the stuff that might be going on. That's why I picked this image behind me. One of our authors describes joy as bubbly, effervescent form of holiness. A bubbly, effervescent form of holiness. You can't grab on to those bubbles. You cannot capture it. You can't really, you know, once you touch it, it becomes something different. That's what joy is. It's just this bubbling energy that's always available for us if we have the capacity to choose to be present with that energy rather than a heavier, more negative, more sorrowful energy of our experience. This bubbly, effervescent form is always available to us. Llewellyn Von Lee, great Sufi master, great teacher, says that joy slips through our fingers and runs down the street laughing. <laughs> I like that, that effervescence, that just, it's, and you know what? 
Joy is contagious. When you're around joy, you know it. When you're around joy, you feel it. When you're not, you feel it too, don't you? Yeah. But when you're around joy, there's a contagion about it. So guess what? We're all invited to be that joy so that we can spread that wherever we go, you see. It's a big energy. Joy is a huge energy. And that joy is the antidote to a lot of the fear and the icky stuff that goes on in life. So what about joy? Well, what I found out in my life is that when I think joy is dependent on something happening, on a particular thing, I miss it. Because if, it, if we think that joy is dependent on anything except the attitude that we bring to whatever that thing is, we're going to miss it. That's what joy is. It's an attitude that we bring to the experience that we're having on the spot in the moment. It's an attitude. It's this inner experience, this bubbling from within. It doesn't come to us from out there. Sometimes we think that, you know, we look around the world and see the things of the world, and we think, oh, if I just had that, I'd be joyful. Or if I could do that, I'd be joyful. Or if I could take that trip, I'd be joyful. Or if that thing would happen, then I'd be joyful. No, no. Joy comes from within, and it bubbles forth through us out into the world. And I like the idea that our author tells us because he says, we wrap around our minds around the things that we notice. So when we're in our life experience and we're noticing all the negativity and we're noticing all the icky stuff and we're noticing all the darkness and we're noticing all the pain, that's what we choose to attach to. And when we do that, we're not making room for the opposite of that energy. We wrap our minds around this darkness, the sorrow aspect, and we're not allowing this energy of the effervescence to be part of our experience. And this is the deal. When stuff happens, yeah, I, there's a lot of darkness in life. There's a lot of negativity in life. It's true. We're in a human condition. It's complex. Have you noticed? Have you read the news lately? Have you heard the news lately? Are you aware of what's going on in the world at all? If you are, you know there's darkness. There's some negative stuff, some very icky stuff going on. But this is the deal. All that, it's not just happening to a person or to an experience. It's happening as part of a soul journey. It's happening as part of the greater dynamic of our time together here on this planet. And so we get to look at these things, whatever they are, from the perspective of finding the divine in it. Now, are we always going to go, boy, that sure is full of joy? No. But we can accept it. We can accept the experience as it is and move on, like Glenda would say, bless it and move on. And when we can just be with it in that way, we allow the energy of the divine, of God, whatever you call that, to move through that experience and begin to transmute it so that we don't get pulled and sucked into it, so that our joy, our effervescence, doesn't get totally sucked up by that thing, whatever that negative thing is, so that we then can go on in our own life experience as this energy of positivity, as this energy of love, as this energy knowing the grace of God is part of all of it. So I was looking at Eckhart Tolle, our, our Bible, Come and Grab's Bible on Fridays, and this is what he says. He says, people believe themselves to be dependent on what happens for their happiness and joy. They don't realize that what happens is the most unstable thing in the universe. Have you noticed? It changes constantly. They look upon the present moment as either marred by something that has happened and shouldn't have happened, or as deficient because of something that has not happened but should have. Yeah? And so they miss the deeper for perfection that is inherent in life itself, that lies beyond what is happening or not happening. That's what I'm trying to get at. 
there's this depth of all of it that lies beyond the surface of what's happening. And when we can tap into that, this is where we rekindle that joy energy within ourselves. Marianne Williamson, I love what she says. Many of you have heard this, I'm sure. We live a large part of our lives in wonderful circumstances that we utterly fail to appreciate. Say that again. We live a large part of our lives in wonderful circumstances that we utterly fail to appreciate. We're not, we're not looking for the God piece of it. We're not looking for the energy of the divine. And so guess what? We're invited, no matter what's going on, to celebrate the good within whatever that thing is, even if it looks a little bit negative, to celebrate that while it's happening. While it's happening. Like, like the image today where, you know, horrible day, but he's still making pancakes that are shaped like little hearts and putting them on the plates of the children. This is what the, the metaphor of how we can approach our, our everyday experience so that we open to whatever life is there to teach us the mystery of that experience in the moment, fresh and new, every moment without bringing the color of our perceptions or our biases or our narrow way of seeing things. We are expanded so that when we're with those things, we, we have the capacity to put the heart-shaped pancake on the plate, you see? There's always something to celebrate, no matter how bad things are. Have you noticed how that works? There's always something to celebrate in the worst of times. And there's no, there's no better person to teach us that than Viktor Frankl, yes? There's always something to celebrate in the worst of times. And, and there's always a flip, the, the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows. There's always something to complain about even in the best of times. You notice how that works? No matter how good it gets, we look for that thing, or, or that thing gets our attention, and all of a sudden, that becomes the bright spot that we pay attention to and focus on, not the other, right? I know you know what I mean. So we're at choice, so what gets in the way? Why do we, why do we miss these opportunities, right? Well, one of the things I know, it's probably very true in my own life, I work on it, but sometimes we're kind of addicted to the way we show up in the world. We get stuck in these patterns of behavior that don't really serve us very well. This mental habit of pointing out the worst possible scenario. Oh gosh, what if? Anybody got what if-itis? You know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Oh no! You know, People, places, things, we're always looking for the, the flip side. We're not focused on that effervescence of the experience. We notice the icky stuff, and when we notice the icky stuff, guess where we put our attention? <coughs> on the icky stuff. And when we do that, guess what? We suck the joy right out of our life experience. We're just sucking the joy right out of life. If we focus on that beauty and the grace and the, and the divine energy of this experience, then we have the possibility for this, this joy to go running down the street laughing, you see. So we got to find a way to work with this stuck energy that keeps sending these messages of anger and fear and worry and anxiety that sort of fuels where we place our attention. We get to choose how that looks for us. Most of us are pretty narrow in the way we show up in the world. And that's what we hope we're here to help you learn to do, is to cultivate the capacity to open up your, your experiences, open up your perspective, open up your heart so that you are not clinging to a small set of beliefs and habits, so that you've got more options on how to approach life situations. How you react or respond makes a big difference, you see. Because when we're living a very narrow life that's very predictable, don't we all like predictable? I do. I love predictable. I'm not too happy when things are so chaotic. Apparently that's why I get such an opportunity to practice that. <laughs> See, things are always changing, they're always pretty darn chaotic, and I get an opportunity to 
bless myself and say, well, I guess it doesn't have to be that predictable, because life is not predictable, like Eckhart Tolle says. So how do we do this? Well, what I know about my own life is I can't plan how I'm going to plan in advance how I'm going to meet these challenges. I can be prayed up. Glenn and I talk a lot about being prayed up. But how it's going to look in the exact moment in time, Glenn and I were working with something this past week, and she said, well, well what, how are we going to do this? And I said, I don't know. I don't think we're going to know till, till we do it. I don't think we're going to know how to be with this until it happens. You see? And we have lots and lots of choices about how to be with this. If we come at it with the intention of being light with it, loving with it, kind with it, honest with it, joyful with it even, and not let it suck us into that abyss and paralyze us, the way we respond to these experiences is going to be very different. But you know what? We can't ever plan ahead how we're going to do it. We can set an intention, yes. I want to be loving. I want to be kind. How that shows up, who knows how that's going to show up. So we just have to be willing to live in this continual surprise. Oh, you, wow, this, this incredible mystery that keeps showing up in all these different ways. It invites us to rekindle and to fire up the effervescence of our joy. You know, kind of, kind of, boy, you know, I'm just long for the ride, just along for the ride. Can't, can't control much. Can't control the way things show up very often been my experience but if I have this playful joyous attitude about it now I do have to give myself permission to meet it in the moment feel the feelings and then make a choice to move forward with joy don't don't hear me say that it's not a process because it is a process we can like anything else like forgiveness or grief or anything else it's a process we've got to feel the feelings we've got to meet it and then we get to choose okay I recognize this, this is a painful experience, this is frightening, this is whatever, and I'm going to choose to focus my energy on the joy of this, the 10,000 joys, rather than let it suck me into being so paralyzed I can't get out of bed. So paralyzed, all I want to do, and Glenda and I are both nines on the Enneagram, anybody who does Enneagram work, our set point is going to bed and pulling covers over our head. That's what we like to do. <laughs> when we're unhealthy. That's, that's our set point. We can't do that. That's not an option. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we have to cultivate this capacity. Like Glenda said, Deepak Chopra says, the very best response to life is laughter. To be able to laugh at life, be, be light with whatever this stuff is, you know, meet it, do what you gotta do, and then at some point, transform it, transmute it, see it from a new perspective. And that's the way that we bring this sense of full appreciation living, this sense of aliveness to our experience, where we're not deadened to life. We have the capacity to be effervescent and joyful within everything. Love it that you read Deepak Chopra's um, statement, because I have it too as my closing. Deepak Chopra teaches, there is no better way to know that you are growing in God realization than when moments of joy begin knitting themselves together. This is the deal. When you are connected and when you're in alignment with your higher self, the energy of the divine, this is where the joy is and this is where you know that you are making progress in your spiritual work. It's always work, not always. So pay attention to the responses you're bringing to your life situation. That surface stuff that keeps showing up all the time as a changing parade of stuff. Take a look. Are you complaining? Or are you appreciating your life experience? Are you finding something good within this experience? Or are you finding something to complain about and worry about and, and awfulize about? What are you noticing about your life experience? Be willing to be goofy. Be willing to be goofy. Be willing to unleash that passion within yourself that knows how to bring that energy to life itself so that you are contagious wherever you go. Because this is the greatest expression of who you really are. This is your divinity. That joyfulness is your divinity. Celebrate the good while it's happening. Whatever's going on, look for the good within that, in the moment. 
Let joy be an expression of who you are. Let joy be an expression of who you are. Be joyful anyway. Thanks for listening.